Good morning everyone. Just thought I would pop on. I know I don't normally come on on a Monday. But I wanted to pop on and show you the embossing mats. Which are my product of the week. Okay, so I'm just going to wait a little while and see that people know that I am online. While no one's here, I might just adjust the camera a little bit as well. Okay, so my product of the week this week. So I appear to be a little bit sideways, but I don't know. See how we go. My stand must be sideways. But anyway, hey, who cares? You've jumped on to see about the Big Shot embossing mats, which are wonderful. Good morning, Shelley. Lovely to have you here. Congratulations on your first live the other day. You did extremely well. I don't normally jump on on a Monday. So I don't know how many people will actually come and watch because they're not used to me being here on a Monday. I normally do Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. But I had someone just ask a question about the embossing mats that I popped up as my product of the week. So I thought, well... The easiest way to answer that question is to demonstrate. So this is what I was going to do tomorrow. But lucky you all get to see it today instead, which means I need to come up with another project for later in the week. But that's okay. Not a drama. So if you're here, pop on and say hello so I know that you're watching. I just need another coffee because, you know, it's one of those days. I've got a bit of Monday-itis today. All right, so on to the Big Shot embossing mats. The question came through from someone. Sorry, I'm just bringing my Big Shot over. See, I'm not organized, so maybe I should not have come on today. Right, the question was, do these replace your standard Big Shot platform? In a nutshell, no, they don't. They're in addition to it. So your standard Big Shot platform Good morning, Jan, from New South Wales, South Coast. Are you getting blown away down there? I've heard it's very windy. It's actually very windy up here yesterday and today as well. So that's your standard Big Shot platform. When you use your embossing folders, you use the two acrylic plates. Look at my very well-loved acrylic plates. That doesn't impact how they perform. They still work really, really good. If you're using framelits or thinlets, then you add in your thin die adapter and then the two acrylic plates. All right, so that's your standard, what you have on your Big Shot three quarters of the time. Now, the Big Shot embossing mats, there's a different sandwich combination. So you don't use the thin die adapter at all. So we'll take that out of the equation. And you normally use only one acrylic plate. So I'll take the other one out of the equation. So you're left with your Big Shot platform and one acrylic plate. Has been, but today is lovely. Oh, that's nice. So if you're watching live and you share my uh, Facebook Live, you're going to the draw for a little prize. So I do that for every Facebook Live and I draw them at the end of the week. So. I will um, contact you if you are a winner, so you can send me your, your address if I don't already have it. Right now, with the Big Shot embossing mats, let me just get these cards out of the way so I've got a bit more room. There's two different things you can do with it. This is the uh, sheet that comes in it, and it does have instructions on the back. And I, uh, is that out of shot, isn't it? So I'm going to have to do it this way. So you have your English instructions down here. You can cut and emboss, and you can just emboss only. Good morning, Diane. Lovely to have you here. 
Then the rest is in French, German, Japanese. Then you've got this nice little diagram down here that each little item is numbered so that you know exactly what you're going to do. So I found it really awkward to keep looking back when I'm working out what sandwich I need, to keep looking back up here for my little chart of what each number means. So number one, what's number one? Well, that's the standard cutting pad. All right, number 10, oh, that's the thin blue mat. So what I did was photocopy these instructions, cut out this little grid, information grid here, and glue it down here. So then I can just have it sitting like that on my desk when I need a reminder of what I need to do when. Now, once you start using these, it becomes second nature. And I will admit, when I first got them and started using them, I was really, really confused. And I went, oh my gosh, I'm never, ever gonna get the hang of these. And I think what confused me is because at the top here, they have your standard sandwich, which is the one I told you about before, which is your platform, your thin die adapter, and your two plates with your paper and the die. Now, I already know that, uh, that's second nature. So but having that on there confused me to start with. And I thought, oh, this is really confusing. Because when I was trying to work out what I was doing, I kept automatically referring to that diagram and I don't know why. So I have highlighted here, cut and emboss sandwich and the emboss only sandwich. So I know, ignore that. Look at these two. These are the two I need. And they're really, really simple. So before I get into what the sandwiches are and the combinations you need, I'll show you what you get in the pack. So you get this leaflet with the instructions and the diagrams. You get a thin blue silicon mat. Now, mine's been used a few times and it has picked up dirt off my acrylic plates. That doesn't affect how it works and I haven't had a problem with that causing extra indents where they shouldn't be or anything. I assume that you should be able to clean these off quite easily with um, baby wipe or even just run the metal. Um, under the water. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Good morning, Ray. Lovely to catch you here. So I don't know yet the best way to clean these, but saying that the dirt on mine that's picked up from the acrylic mats has not caused me a problem yet. So, I mean, there could be a time where if I get too much on there, it's going to put extra little dots on what I'm embossing, um, but I won't worry about working out how to clean them until that happens. But they do um, pick up any hairs or anything you've got. See, I've got a lovely cat hair on there. Um, because they're a bit staticky, I guess, because they're silicon. And probably because it's really windy weather, they're picking up a little bit more. And then you get a grey silicon mat, which is a bit thicker. So you can see them side by side. The blue one is really, really thin. And the grey one is a lot thicker. And then you get your white platform. It's a hard acrylic platform. And that's what you get. In your embossing mats. Now to use them, really, really easy. We'll follow along with the diagram for the cut emboss. So you need your basic Big Shot platform, which is number seven, Big Shot platform. So you work from the bottom up. So the next one is the number one standard cutting pad. That's what they call these acrylic plates. So you just put your standard acrylic plate down. Then number three, you have your die with the paper still in it. Now what I'll say with this, you can even though it says cut and emboss, you cannot cut and emboss at the same time. You need to run the die through first to cut it, then run it back through with this sandwich we're making now to emboss it. And I'll show you here on this card that I'm gonna run through making. This lovely seat has been die cut and embossed. And I'm hoping you can see that. There's a bit of a delay in what I can see on my screen as to what um, I'm actually doing. So I have to wait for my screen to catch up. But that is the, can you see how that is embossed? It's got this lovely stroke mark along here and each of the seat backs is embossed. And it's really, really beautiful chair. But to do that, you've got to run the die through first in your standard platform. So you have your, sorry, standard sandwich. You have your platform, your thin die adapter, and your two acrylic plates. Cut out your bench seat. Then, when you want to emboss it, you then build the platform. Sorry, you then build the sandwich. Oh, too many words. You then build the sandwich that we're doing now. So they then say, put the die 
and the paper in here. So let's pretend I have a chair and I will run through this. So this is, that's what I've used to cut this chair out with. So we have our die still in here, but it's been cut. So we turn it around so that the cutting edge is facing upwards. So normally you put your cutting edge down. This time you want it upwards. So it's like back to front reverse. Then it says to put number nine on it, which is the thick, sorry, the thick gray silicon mat, which where are my mats? Here we go. You put the gray one on top and then you put the white one on top, which they say number eight is your impressions pad white. Then you run that through the big shot and you end up with a lovely embossing on your die cut. Now, say you wanted to emboss only. So let's build it again. This time, let's use a framelit. So on this card, or on this one as well, the cobblestones are embossed. It's not a stamp. They are embossed onto the white cardstock. To do that, we have special embossing dies that don't cut, they just emboss. So this is the cobblestone die. So it's got no cutting edge on it at all. They are just raised segments. So your cutting edges have the raised bit around them. I'll get one out. So it has the little raised lip and that is your cutting edge. This doesn't have them, it's raised, but there's no lip on it. It's just purely for embossing. So to emboss, you put your Big Shot platform, one of your acrylic mats, your die, your paper over the top. So pretend this is a hole. No, I'll get a whole piece of paper. Wait a second. My desk is a mess, so I might be able to find a piece. Oh, here we go. So your die over where you want that embossing to be. Then you use, so we're following this diagram now. So number four is your die with a cutting edge up. So this is just an embossing die though. So I will talk about the cutting ones as well. And then you put the blue mat on top. They so say then to put the paper. Then number 10 is your thin blue mat over the top. Now when you're doing this, be careful not to move this because it's really easy for your paper to slip and then it will be, your embossing will not be where you want it to be. So some people have um, washi taped their cardstock onto the acrylic mat so that it doesn't move when you're putting this mat on. But I found if you're quick and you just drop, then you really don't have a problem. And then your white mat on top. So see how easy it is? It is just simply, it's always these two. It's always then your die, always just your paper. Then it depends on what you're doing as to what mat you use. You either use a blue one for embossing or the gray one if you've already cut the die and you want to emboss it. And then the white one on top. So it's really, really simple. It's It looks really confusing in the diagrams, but once you actually sit and think about it or you're shown it, it is really easy. Now I will say a word with the embossing mats. The, tech, the different size or thicknesses of the embossing mats will give you a different look. Now, they say when you're embossing only to use this thin one. But I have found with some dyes, it gives just a really, really gentle embossing effect. But you can get a much deeper embossing effect if you use the grey one. So you'll see on this card here, same die of the cobblestones, the embossing die, here. A much much softer, softer. I create a new word. A much much softer and gentle embossing effect. Much more subtle. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and bring it. Sorry, up closer to the camera. See that is a much um, subtle embossing effect, and there's not a great depth there. And the, I actually, when I did it, I went, oh, that hasn't worked. It didn't emboss much at all. So I, oh, wait, my phone, I'm sorry. My house phone never rings. And I thought I'd turn the ringer down, but obviously I didn't. And it'll be a call center. And as soon as the answer machine kicks in, they will hang up. Wait for it. Told ya, 
I'm actually going to disconnect that phone because we never use it. Sorry about that, but anyway. And it's going to stop in a minute, I'm sure. Good morning, Nicole. Um, yeah, so it's a much subtle embossing effect. And when I did it, I went, you're actually not going to see that. So I sponged over the top of it, which made it come up really, really nice. And I really like that effect. But if you want a more, much bolder effect, then use the grey mat. And this is what I got with the grey mat. And instantly before I sponged it, I could see that embossing on the cardstock. The only downside is that you will get the border of the die as well. But I sort of looked at that and went, oh, that's a little bit disappointing. And then oh, I can make that work. That will look like um, just a little paved area at the end of a garden for a seat to sit on. So it worked in this instance. It may not work in all instances. Now, I do believe that some of the embossing dies may be um, a bit deeper of an etch so that you get a stronger impression. Um, I'm not going to say that for certain. I don't know. But um, that's just a tip on how to get the different effects of your embossing. So now I've run through all that. If you've missed this, then I'm going to demonstrate these two cards so you'll get to see the sandwich. But these embossing mats are really, really cool. I have fallen in love with them. And um, I've got a tip that I'm going to post on Friday, but I'll tell you now. When you're um, working out your sandwiches and everything is numbered, it's a really good idea to number your actual mats, but use a permanent um, marker. I thought I used a permanent marker last night, but I actually had the number come off. So I had numbered this because the blue silicone mat is number 10. So I put a number 10 on this, a number 9 on this one, and a number 8 on this one. But then when I was making a project last night, I looked at it and went, what is that grey on my project? And then I realised it. my pen that I used was a thick marker, art line marker, but it wasn't permanent. So it was coming off on my project. So I took that off with a little bit of orange oil and I'll find a permanent marker to put the numbers on because it's just really easy when you're referencing the guide as to what to put where is to have the numbers so you just look for the number pick it up um but after a few times of using them you'll get it down pat and you'll find that it's really easy so these are my product of the week and um i have fallen in love with them so let's get cracking and make a few cards i'm going to make these two cards that i've just put somewhere here they are these two cards and show you how easy it is to use the embossing mats. Now they are my um, product of the week, which means I have a special of the week on them as well. Um, do you want to know what it is now? Because I usually release that on Tuesday, so I don't know. Maybe because I'm on live now instead of later in the week. Maybe I should tell you the special now. What do you think? Who wants to know what the special is? Well, I have a sip of my coffee. Oh, that has gone cold. Oh. Mm. Good morning, Karen. Lovely to have you pop in. Right, so, first thing, we'll do this one because this has got the really subtle embossing on it. So, first thing I'm going to do is do my embossing. So, I'm going to build my sandwich. My base, normal Big Shot platform, no thin die adapter, a normal acrylic plate. Now, I've lost some of my bits of paper my die where i want it to be um i think which way did i do it I don't know. that way maybe that way and around there on my card right now I'll, I'll follow the instructions they have for just embossing which is using the thin blue mat fingers crossed it doesn't move ah uh, and look at that see it moved so if you're worried about that happening, get your good old washi tape out and hold it in place. Right. And then we just need our white plate that comes with the embossing mats. I'm going to hold that all together. Hopefully nothing moves and bring my big shot in. And then you're just going to run it through. Now with the blue, the part, the um, blue embossing mat, it will feel like nothing's happening. Like I felt no pressure at all on that. Okay, but it does actually do something. So now I will pull this off. 
And see what I was saying before? All the dirt from my um, acrylic plates is coming off on the mats. Hasn't impacted how they perform as yet. I'll let you know when they do. So if you can see that, you can see just a really subtle embossing of those pavers, the cobblestones. And on the other side, it's done the reverse. So you can use either side. Um, that's sort of like a raised edge. I actually prefer the indented edge because when you think of cobblestones, they're like set higher, a little bit higher. They're not like indented. So I hope that makes sense. So to make it stand out more, I just sponged. So I'm sure you've all seen this before. I've lost my inks. Wait a minute. They're hiding behind my... No. Oh, here they are. I'm oh, sorry. Right. So I embossed that in Sahara sand. Not embossed it. Sponged it. What am I saying? Just going to make sure my sponge is... not got a lot of other colour on it. Yes, maybe Diane. Wipe it over with a damp cloth when you use it. Would you suggest that before or after you've actually run it through the big shot? Okay, so I'm just going to lightly sponge these cobblestones and look at that come up straight away. Oh, I've got a bit of green on there. Whoops, whoops, whoops. whoops. That's what I get for not getting out another sponge, being too lazy. I tend to just use the same one over and over again though, so until it's like way too dirty. Right, so there's my cobblestones. Now, see how they've come up? That, like, in, it's more impressive when you sponge it than just seeing it um, on the plain cast top. Both if needed. After or both if needed. Yes, I could try that. I've got a um a baby wipe. I reckon that might work. So now the rest of it I have just sponged in granny apple green. My favourite, favourite green. I know it's very bright, but we've got a really nice selection of greens at the moment in our colours. Really, really nice. Call me clover is good. Shader Spruce is pretty good. Garden Green is my um, go-to Christmas green. Oh yeah, it's talking about Christmas. If you don't have a holiday catalogue yet, or you haven't asked me to send you one, please do so. It's absolutely wonderful. I got another delivery today. <laughs> oh, I think it's my second or third. So, you know, you can never have too much Christmas stuff. Right, so there we have the base of our card. I might do those cobblestones a little bit darker. Do you reckon they need? I think they need to be out, standing out a little bit more. Let's go over them a fraction more. So this is the card that I'm copying, just so that you know if you've just joined me. Alright, so there's our cobblestones. I love how when you do something, it turns out different every time. It's so cool. Right, if you saw my desk, oh my gosh, you would be amazed. It's such a mess. I have lots of things going on at once. I have lots of videos to make today for my stamping by mail. And lots of swaps to make all happening and I love it all right so this stamp set I'm using would you believe I bought because of this chair that's the only reason I bought this stamp set anyway it's called sitting pretty I am not a dog fan um I'm a not really a cat person either but we have a cat and she's so cute and adorable um but I bought this for the chair and then I went oh it's got a bulldog I don't like dogs but I guess I'll use it I mean I have I've got a bulldog on the other card so, and he's quite cute. Not my favourite type of dog, but he's a dog. Yeah, so I bought it for this chair. That's pretty sad, isn't it? Right, now, I don't even have any box out. We are just going to stamp this chair in memento, which needs re-inking. 
Right now a tip for using your photopolymer stamps. If you don't want to use the Stamparatus, you don't want to get your Stamparatus out um, so that if it doesn't stamp properly you can go over it again. If you don't want to do that, just grab your stamp and pierce mat, pop it underneath. Sometimes they just need a little bit extra, oh my gosh, one's got lots of holes in it, a little bit extra um, support under the stamp to get a better image. So excuse me if my head gets in the way. I'm just going to stamp our little chair and it's going to be crooked because my paper was crooked. If you're here and haven't said hello, please say hello. And everyone who shares my videos while they're live will go into the drawer for a little price. I do a drawing at the end of the week and one person for every live gets drawn out to get a little prize. All right, so there's my chair. Now the love heart, you can see I've cut one out of this paper. We're just gonna cut a little love heart out. Oh my goodness. And then we're going to do the little pot plant. Right, so now what I'm doing with my big shot, I know it's off camera, I'm not going to bring it back in, is I'm just adding my thin dye adapter back on and then my second acrylic plate because I'm back to the normal die cutting. So I hope everyone is well. Anyone do any crafting on the weekend? Okay, so Sim from Lightning Ridge. Hello. I hope you're having a better time than we did there a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> That's what you told me you were going there. How long have you been there? Because we might have been there at the same time. Came home last Saturday. So like a week and a couple of days ago. Wow, it seems like so much longer. Alright, was it a weekend? Yeah, we need to come home just this weekend. It's been last week. Uh, right, so what happened? We have been here a week and a bit. Ah, oh, yeah, we actually left up there early. Hubby did his back in. Um, had a bit of sciatica trouble. So he couldn't get down at the grow and dump and um or grey and dump however you say it and look for the opals like we had planned we did it one day but then his back packed it in so we couldn't do it after that um so then the accommodation this time around uh, wasn't that great we'd stayed at this place before in a cabin but it was a much nicer cabin we worked out this cabin was a little bit more older Need a lot of maintenance. One of the bunk beds was broken. So my poor son is trying to sleep on the top of this bunk bed with one of the rungs, metal rungs underneath is broken. So there's a big divot where his bum was. And um, it was really uncomfortable giving him a bad back. And of course my daughter was underneath in the bunk, not getting much sleep because every time he turned, it woke her up and she thought he's gonna fall through on top of her. <laughs> so then I went, oh no, let's um, sort something out here. So I thought, let's pull the sun's mattress off the top bunk, put it on the floor. So then, you know, my daughter's not going to worry about him falling through on top of her. And um, he'll be able to get a good night's sleep. He'll be on a flat surface. That was fine until we realised that um, it gets really, really cold on the night. And the cabin was like raised, like they are. And he was absolutely freezing the poor thing. So the next night we went... Um, right, well, let's put extra blankets on him and see how that goes. A little bit better, but he still couldn't sleep much because he was really cold. So, and then add to that hubby's bad back and we thought, hmm, okay, this is not working for us. Let's just call it quits. But we didn't want to come home. So we decided to spend a few days at Toowoomba because 
we'd seen this nice, oh, cool-looking military museum on the way through. And my son's military man, so we thought, let's go back to there. There's a Cobb Co. Museum. There's a few other things around Toowoomba to go see, so let's go back there. Um, so we did. We got to Toowoomba, went to the information centre or somewhere. We asked about military museum, and it's closed permanently. We went, oh, no. <laughs> Oh dear. But we went to the Cobb Co. Museum and then we went to a historic village. Sorry if my hair gets in the way. I'm trying to line this up and I just can't bother getting my apparatus out to do it properly. So fingers crossed, toes crossed, everything crossed. Um, yeah, so then we spent a nice few days at Toowoomba actually. And then on the way home, we stopped by the zoo, which needs a bit of work on it, but we had a good time. And uh, yeah, and then came home a day earlier than we had planned. So, hmm, that was our exciting trip to Lightning Ridge. Normally we go and absolutely love it. And it's like, oh no, do we have to go home? This time it was like, oh, I just want to go home. <laughs> so it wasn't the best, but anyway, I hope you're having a better time. We love Lightning Ridge. There's something about it. I don't know what it is. The water stinks. It's hot. There's lots of flies. But, I don't know. Just, it appeals for some reason. Okay, there's our little pot plant for the side. And what I did, once I cut it out, I realised that it was a little bit stark. In contrast to the rest of the card because I sponged the rest of the card so it's got a dye which is really cool so then I like I sponged it after I'd cut it out and I'll show you that so I'm also too lazy to get my man magnetic platform out a lot so I use washi tape which has disappeared off my desk probably my cat oh no you found it Yes, Ray, no place like home. You need a caravan. We stayed at a farm just out of town. Free care, it's amazing. Oh, wow. I know, I've got to see more. I have not heard. Oh, why is this thing? Go away, go away, go away. Oh, no, I can't see more. I have not heard. And then I miss the rest because there's stupid icons in the way. Has a memorial. F I missed that. I have not heard good things. Let me get them out of the way. No, I'm sorry. I've got an angry face now. And I want to do an angry face. Hang on. Oh, that's really annoying. Glengarry Pub. Yes. Having a ball. Good. We like the pub in the scrub. Glengarry Pub. That's the other one, isn't it? Further on when you go out that way. I don't know if we've been that far along. We sort of went to the Outback Pub in the Scrub. Sorry. And then the Greyland Dumps. And I don't think we've gone that whole route out there. And we were meant to this time. And then I think Hubby's back just changed everything. And we didn't, didn't get a chance. And the kids have said they're never going back, so. <laughs> but then if we decide, you know, in a few years' time that, oh, it wasn't that bad because we've forgotten, then we'll go again. But no, hubby won't get a caravan, unfortunately. But I think next time we might try to see if there's better accommodation at Walgett and then just drive in for the day. So I don't know, it's a bit of a hike, a little bit of a hike, but... If it means the kids are going to be more willing to go, then I'm up for it. Right. And I was amazed on the trip. Um, haven't been to the three of them yet. <laughs> Looking forward to going, going to do the Black Opal tour next week. Cool. Yes, we went to um, the Underground Mine. The one... Um, there's one that you have to go down a spiral staircase. Uh, we didn't do that one. We did the other walk-in one. It was really interesting. It was really good. So, 
Good morning, Arlene. Lovely to have you here. So anyway, back to this project. No one wants to hear about our travels, Sim, I'm sure. <laughs> I could talk all day, but anyway, other people are not interested. <laughs> Don't know why not. Lightning Ridge, the great Australian outback town. Seriously, if you haven't been, you need... Your son refused to get out of the car in Walgut. Really that good? <laughs> Maybe we won't stay there. But you know what I found? The price of our combination at Walgut. Oh, sorry, at Walgut. At Lightning Ridge, what we got was disgusting. It's so expensive. Compared to at Toowoomba, what we got is light and day. Seriously. The one at Toowoomba was like five star, two bedroom unit. Really nice. The beds were to die for. I wanted to bring the bed and the pillow home because I was so comfortable. Um, yeah, but I guess somewhere like Lightning Ridge where it's remote, they can charge what they want really because where else are you going to stay? <laughs> There's limited places, so. Alright, so I just sponged that pot plant around the fronds, the greenery. This one blends in a bit more with the card because it was a bit stark against the rest of the card because I'd sponged the rest of the card. So now I'm just going to do the sentiment. And then put my layers together so you can see the embossing on this one is quite subtle i'm sorry this is going to be going on a bit long ah uh, sorry because we've got the other one to do yet okay just our sentiment fingers crossed i don't know if it's straight yay right and now we will just put our layers oh put our plant on with dimensionals So if you just joined me, what I'm demonstrating today is the embossing mats. I did run through the sandwiches and how it all works to start with. So I'll go through it really quickly before I make the next card for those who've just joined and missed out. Because they're not as scary as you first think. And they are really, really good. They add like a new dimension. To your card making or anything scrapbooking any craft any paper cardstock that you can add embossing to these are really good and it means that now with your normal dies that you cut with you can emboss with them as well and I will show you tomorrow on the project you like this set yeah I like this set too the stamp set and framelits they're all gonna fall off the desk in a minute <laughs> sitting pretty is the stamp set and the matching framelits are called um, <laughs> I don't know wait what are they called this is them pretty park framelits I bought it would you believe Karen for the chair that wrought iron looking chair <laughs> that's all I bought it for and yes, I'm crazy and do things like that. Now I've lost my bone folder. Yes, embossing plates are really cool. All right, and then this is just my last layer. So this is just standard making card. I'll skim through it because you've all done it a million times. And it looks like I need a new trimmer blade because I've got a bit of fluff. On my cuts right so there we go that's that card with our subtle embossing so now we'll make the second card and show you um, a deeper embossing so this is using the blue mat okay I've even lost my embossing mats now all right this is using the blue silicon mat which is really really thin paper thin it's like a millimeter thick um, so that's using this embossing mat to get a subtle embossing effect now we'll move on and we'll do the same thing, but we will use the gray mat to give us a thicker effect. And I've lost that card. Wait, where'd it go? Here it is. Right, so this one is a much deeper etched effect to the embossing than this one. You'll see the difference straight away. The only problem with this one is that you do get the outline of the die. So if you don't like that looked, if you don't like that look, then you have to go with a more subtle look. So the only difference between these two is the mat that I've used. 
This one's using the blue thin mat and this one's using the thicker gray mat, which is possibly three, two to three mil thick. Um, and that this is like not even a mil thick, it's like half a mil thick. All right, so now I'll show you this card. It's made exactly the same way. Your sandwich is exactly the same. All right, so let's move the stamp set out of the way. Bring our embossing, oh sorry, our Big Shot back. Good morning, Chrissy. Lovely to have you here again. Right, so your normal Big Shot platform is your Big Shot platform. Sorry, your normal Big Shot sandwich is your Big Shot platform, your thin die adapter, and two of your standard cutting plates or the clear acrylic plates. Okay, mine are, one of them is a fraction bent, but that's fine. It still works. They still work, even though they're disgustingly cut up and bits of paper in them and everything. They still work. Good morning, Nikki. Lovely to have you here. So when you're using the embossing mats, there is a diagram comes in your instructions as to what you need to use. And there's instructions up here on what to do. This is English, French, Japanese, and German. I photocopied these instructions because I kept getting annoyed at having to flip back from here to here to see what my numbers mean. So I photocopied it, cut out that little grid or that little table and stuck it here so it's easy reference. This is your normal standard sandwich is what I've shown you here when you're die cutting. This is if you want to cut and emboss and this is if you want to emboss only. So I just did the embossing only which I used this die which just embosses and that made the cobblestones under this chair. And I got the different look with the two different embossing mats, the gray and the blue, all right? They say on this one to use the blue embossing mat, which is um, number 10. With this one, when you cut and emboss, which is what I'll be doing on this card, it's the same, basically the same sandwich. The only difference is your mat you're using this one you're using the gray that one you're using the blue and this one you need to cut out the die piece first and then emboss it so even though it says cut and emboss you cannot cut and emboss in the one it's not strong enough to cut out the shape but it does emboss it so what we'll do first is our cobblestones so we get the thin die adapter and one of our acrylic plates out of the equation. We use our Big Shot platform, an acrylic plate, our die. Okay, so this is just going to emboss the cobblestones. Our piece of paper, so where we want the cobblestones to be on our paper, so it's going to be there. Try not to move it. If you think it's gonna move and annoy you and you're gonna get it out of place, wash you tape your piece of paper down. Now, the difference here I'm using is the gray mat instead of the blue mat. And then you use the white plate that comes with your embossing mats on top. Simply run that through your Big Shot. So this is a bit of a longer one today because I, I wanted to show you the difference with the gray and the blue mats. In the instructions when they say emboss only they say to you just use the blue mat but i have found if you want a deeper impression there's no reason you can't use the gray mat and you'll see the difference straight away right straight away you've got a deeper etch than what we had earlier so that will be highlighted when i sponge it it'll, it'll show up even more now let's do the seat now we're going to do a cut and emboss so i need to cut the seat out first so let's just Grab back our thin die adapter. So this is going to be your standard cutting sandwich when you cut out all your dies. You've got your paper, you get your die with the cut side down. All right, so there's our standard die. Acrylic plate on top. Bring the big shot back. Whenever I'm cutting something like this, I like to run it through twice just to make sure it cuts all the way through. All right. Now, normally you would eject that die from the cardstock. Leave it in place. All you're going to do is take your thin die adapter away, one of your cutting plates. 
You're going to hold your die and the paper really carefully so they don't separate. Pop it back down, upside down. So we've cut it out, now we want to emboss it. This time, in the instructions, they say to use cut and emboss. Seven is your standard cutting pad, which is the, um, no, sorry. Seven is the Big Shop platform. Number one is your standard um, cutting pad, which is your acrylic plate. Number three is your die with the paper still in it, cutting edge up. So I've just turned that over because my cutting edge when I cut it out was down. Now I've turned it around, it's upside down. Then number nine is your thick silicon rubber mat, which is the gray one. Pop that over the top. That's okay, Heather. No worries, I'm answering your question. Very long-winded answer. So you're probably best to watch the replay because I'm going on for a little while. And then on top, number eight, is your impressions pad white. So that's just the um, acrylic pad that comes with the embossing folders, the embossing mats. Oh my gosh, what's terminology? I'm getting tongue twisted. Right, and then just rub, run that through your big shot. You feel a bit more resistance this time around. Using the grey mat is always a bit thicker. Oh. Alright, and then you'll see... Feel hear that static? I don't know whether it's just because it's windy today or it's always going to be staticky. Now we can remove our die from our paper. Oh, a little bit in there, stuck. Come on, out you come. Now I get my pokey tool, or tweezers I'll do today, because they're easy to get. Pull your chair out of your die. I ran it through twice to cut it. Maybe it didn't need it. So if you do that, sometimes it squishes it right into the die. And it's like, I'm not coming out. All right. So there is our chair. It cut a little bit there. I did run it through too much because I cut that little bit. No. That could have been when I was pulling it out then as well. But you can see how now it's embossed. It's not only cut out, but it's embossed. All these little rungs at the back have embossing on them. So they're like raised. And then you've got the little hatch marks along here. Ever so cute. Sorry about that. Alright, so that's how easy it is to cut and emboss. And then and to emboss. It's just really, really cool. Now we're just going to finish this card. So um, that's all I have really to show you. The rest is just standard making a card. But you're free to stay and watch. I don't care. I'm going to make it anyway. So just remember if you're watching me live and you share my video, go into the drawer for a little prize. So you'll see when I sponge this, the difference straight away in the embossing, it's much more prominent. But you do also get the outline of the die. Right, so much more prominent cobblestones than we had on this card. Same die, purely just a different mat. I just used the grey mat on this one and the blue mat on that one. Whoops, I was about to do my grass in brown. That would be what it's like out at Lightning Ridge. On the way out, we couldn't believe, like you hear all about the drought and how bad it is. Um, but as we were driving through the countryside and we got closer and closer, to, you know, out back or out further it took us a little while to realize that it looked different because normally it's like quite green and and lush some of the fields and you're just driving along and you go oh yeah this is what it's like out here and then you go no hang on it's not normally this brown everything was just brown it was real eye-opener just you know good morning Marlene and there was lots it's gonna make it sound horrible there was lots of roadkill. There was so many dead kangaroos on the road, which means they must be moving around much more than they normally do to get feed and stuff because there was a lot on the road. It was some places it was ridiculous. It was like three or four within a matter of like two meters. It was bad. 
So, but I guess that's the Australian bush for you and our weather system. Uh, right, so, just sponging the back and doing a terrible job because I'm too busy chatting, not paying attention, and it's getting much more motley than what I liked. But anyway, hey, it's done. Right, so there's our very unevenly sponged background. Yeah, Sim, it is really bad, hey. You don't realise you go out there and see it. It's terrible. Okay. Oh, thank you, Chrissy. I'm glad you like the cards. Now, for this one, I'm just trying to think what I did for this one. I did the plant and the pot straight on the card for this one. Sorry if my head's in the way. I'm going to need to stamp the bulldog too, so I'll leave that open. Yes, but these are mossy mats, seriously. Um, did anyone want to know what the special of the week is? I don't think anyone answered my question before. My special of the week I normally announce on a Tuesday, but because I'm on live on a Monday, not normally, then I thought I'd let you know what it is today. So you can get your little lists ready. I'm going to tell you anyway, my special of the week this week is, uh, wait, I've forgotten what I said. I think it's if you buy any bundle. Yes, that's what it was. Oh, what a memory, Narelle. Buy any bundle, which is a stamp set and framelits or stamp set and punch, then you get the uh, embossing mats for half price. That's very cool, isn't it? And if you wanted this bundle that I'm using today, it is the Sitting Pretty stamp set that I bought for this chair. And the Pretty Park Frameless dies. Really nice, actually. I'm really loving this set. It's it's um much more versatile than just the dog. Or the, I mean the what am I saying? Just the seat. I've lost the stamps though. I think I need to clean my desk up. Seriously, it's getting beyond a joke. I have piled to the left, piled to the right, things about to fall off my desk at any moment. It's not a pretty sight. Because so I wasn't going to come on live today, but then I went, ah, yeah, why not? I've got a card, I'm ready, let's do this. Right, so now I'm just going to stamp the bulldog and I could get the stamparatus out for this, but um, I actually can't reach it at the moment because of my messy desk. So this is as good as we're going to get today. And then our little bulldog. Sorry if my head gets in the way, but I'm going to have trouble lining him up. I just know it. Fingers crossed. Yeah, not perfect, but he'll do. It's okay. Right, and I'm loving that most of our stamp sets now have lots more framelits. When they have a framelit to go with them, there's only a framelit for just about every stamp in the set, which is really cool. So no more fussy cutting. I like a bit of fussy cutting, but sometimes it's like, oh, do I really want to use that image if I want to cut around it? Is it worth it? Right, so now I want to cut out my bulldog. I go back to my standard cutting system sandwich, which is my platform, my thin die adapter, and my two acrylic plates. So if you missed my demonstration on the embossing mats, you'll have to go back and re-watch. So the replay will be up uh, shortly after I finish. And there's our little puppy dog. That's as close as a puppy dog as my daughter's ever going to get. She wants one and has been nagging for one. But I don't think she won't get one. Right, dimensionals for our puppy dog. Then we're just going to glue our seat on. A 
lovely embossed bench seat. So just run a little bit of the Tombow glue. Not a lot, you don't really need a lot. Just run it along the long pieces. And a really smidge on each of the back rest bit. And that should be enough to hold it in place. And it's on a slope. Sitting downhill, right there we go, that's much better. Then just our sentiment. Lovely sentiments in this set as well. So there's, I'm going to use the Sitting, Thinking, Missing of You. I used this one on the first card. Anywhere with you is better than anywhere without you. And Best Friends. Sorry for the rattle, rattle, rattle. Oh, there we go. I got it out. And I'm going to do this in Soft Suede, which matches the bench seat. I think I need to invest in some of the new ink pads because some of mine are getting a bit yucky. An excuse to buy some more, isn't there? Always an excuse to buy more. We've actually been set a challenge to um, sell ink pads. So if you do want an ink pad, don't forget my special at the moment. Every ink pad you purchase, I'll give you the refill for free. So I had one lady take me up on that. She got five ink pads the other day. So her five refills are heading their way to her. And then I also have my Go For Grease special, Help Me Get To Grease. Um, if you spend $30 in an order, you get a selection of free items. If you spend $60, you get a different selection of items. If you spend $100, you get the take your pick tool which I demonstrated the other day in a live so I didn't use it today um, but I probably will use it later in the week because it's a fantastic tool and you really really need to get that so you can get it for free if you've spent a hundred dollars all right and then I've got a base here somewhere here it is so if you don't know how to make a card base, really easy. Our A4 cardstock cut in half along the long length will give you two card bases. You simply just fold them in half, score them, and you've got a card. How easy is that? And I find the Tomo liquid glue the easiest and quickest when I'm putting my cards together. Dries pretty quickly. You don't need a lot, it lasts a long time. You don't need a refill. It's really, really good. And it's not that expensive. Actually, it's quite reasonable for them for how long it lasts. Hello, Debbie, lovely to have you here. I'm just about finished, doll. I'm sorry, you'll have to watch a replay. There we go. So, these are the cards we made today showing you the embossing mats. It's my product of the week, the embossing mats. Move some of these stamps out of the way so you can see them better. Um, and my special of the week is purchase any bundle, which is the bundles we have on our website, which is a stamp set and the matching framelets or a stamp set and the punch. They're all bundled already on the website. Uh, purchase any bundle this week up until Sunday and you get the embossing mats for free. No, not for free. Half price, sorry. Whoops, not that generous. Jeez, I'd go out of business. Right, so these are the embossing mats. You get the white acrylic one, the thick grey one, and the thin blue one. You get instructions, upside down instructions, instructions and a lovely diagram on how to use them. So there we go. Embossing mats are really fun and I've only just started showing you what you can do with them. So, you like the paler backgrounds better? Yeah, I was a bit heavy-handed today, wasn't I? Never mind. I'm sure someone will appreciate them. 
Thank you, Marlene. So that's it for today, ladies. Thank you for dropping by. I'll be back tomorrow with another project and a, another um, demonstration on the embossing mats because I have a different way to use them tomorrow. So thank you for watching and I hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.